Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following confession that you are going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received from one of our dear sisters. This is the narration of that confession that she sent to me. The narration reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, can you please post for me as hidden identity? I have my own story that I want to share with you. Currently, me and my sisters, we are living here abroad, but the story that I want to share with you today, my brother, it is all about my mother and my uncle. The first thing that I can say is that my mother and her other brother, who was our uncle, were both the most wealthy people in their family. And because of all of this wealth that they had, they then controlled the whole family doing whatever they saw was fit for them. And the situation that used to happen in my mother's family is that whenever anyone would fall sick in the family, that person would then be taken from the village where they will be staying and that sick relative of our mother will then stay with us at our family house or at our uncle's house. But the strange thing that kept on happening over and over again was that if any of my mother's relatives who were sick will be brought home by my mother or by our uncle, you would be rest assured that the person will die. It was like my mother and our uncle were busy sacrificing their family members. Even the neighborhood that we used to stay in, what would happen is that whenever my mother would go and visit a sick person, then after my mother would have given that sick person bananas or apples that she used to keep in her bedroom, then the person would not survive. A couple of days after my mom would have visited that sick person in our neighborhood, then he or she will just die under very mysterious circumstances. In our parents' bedroom, there was something that we didn't know that it was used as an altar. This thing growing up, we never suspected that in our own family house, there was an altar that was used by our parents. But after we were all grown up, that was when we realized that this item that was always there in our bedroom, like it was sort of an interior deco, this was nothing but a satanic altar that that was inside our parents' bedroom. So what these idols, Brother Nashi, looked like, they were made out of wooden carvings that resembled a human face without any body. These wooden carvings had one resembling that of a man and the other wooden carving resembled the face of that of a woman, but it was a face without a body. Then there was one idol that resembled that of a small child. But if you could get into my parents' bedroom with if you could but if you could get into my parents' bedroom when you would look at these idols, you would think that they were just part of the interior deco. Without taking any proper look, one could not see that there was a third item amongst those two idols and that third wooden carving, it was one that resembled a very funny looking small child. By the time that my mother passed away, that was when we realized everything that my mother used to do. When she passed away, then in secret, my uncle and my father took us and they went with us and they made us to dump those idols into a river that is called Mukovisi. When my mother passed away, she was in hospital at Pari. That was where she was admitted and the hospital called my father informing my father about our mother's passing away. Back in those days, we still had those landlines, but my uncle and my father kept the passing away of my mother as a secret from the rest of our relatives. They only informed our relatives after they had destroyed that satanic altar that was used by my mother when she was still alive. So when standing those two idols 
could reach to my knees and behind them we then found out that there was a secret compartment that had some neck chains made out of traditional beads but the dominant color on those traditional beads were green and red in color then there was another compartment it was also a secret compartment at the back of those two idols this secret compartment had the photos that belonged to my mother's relatives i then noticed that each and every photo had one of my mother's i then realized that each and every photo that had any of my mother's dead relative that picture had been crossed out horizontally by a red pen so my father and my uncle made us to load those items that were once part of that satanic altar and it seemed as if my uncle and my father they were so afraid of touching those items they made us to load those idols in the car then the photos that were in another secret compartment at the back of the other idol so back in those days people used to keep physical photos i still remember that we placed all of those photos that belonged to my mother's relatives in a plastic bag this plastic bag it was from a supermarket that is called tm after that we drove to the river where we proceeded with dumping all of those satanic items and the photos and we also dumped those photos into the river and we returned back home only after we had dumped those items my uncle and my father that was when they started informing our relatives about the said passing away of my mother before my mother had died there was one auntie of mine who was my mother's sister so she had fallen sick after she had fallen sick she was then admitted into the hospital the same hospital where my mother later died at pare so one day my mother told me that she could not go and visit my auntie so me and my sister we had to go there and visit her so when me and my sister went there my mother had given me some fruits and some charms so these fruits she used to keep them in her little fridge that was always inside her bedroom and when i went to the hospital and after i had given my auntie those fruits that my mother had given me she then started vomiting but what my auntie did not notice is that when i had gone into that ward where she was admitted in that hospital i then dropped some charms that my mom had given me she had told me that when i had arrived at the hospital i was supposed to drop those charms underneath my auntie's hospital bed the charms that my mother had given me there was a cloth this cloth was big as a newborn baby's socks and inside this little cloth there were a lot of needles these needles those needles they were tied together by a red sewing twine so when i arrived at the hospital i then dropped those charms underneath the hospital bed where my auntie was sleeping on so when i did these things it was in september and my auntie passed away that was in october and in my mother's family people always die in the same month people always die in october even as for my mother she passed away in october as for my uncle he is still alive but me and my siblings we moved out of the country and we are now living here abroad there was another thing that our mother used to do that we still do not understand at any given opportunity we would avoid our mother cooking dinner for us because if our mother would give you food to eat in the evening the next morning when you would wake up you would feel that your mouth would be so smelly as if throughout the night she had made you to eat rotten meat so whenever our mother would cook dinner for us we would hate it because throughout the night you would feel as if your mother had forced you to eat rotten meat because of the smell that would come out of your mouth when the morning would come 
Hello, dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear sisters and we had to try by all means to give you this translation.